Hello everyone and welcome to my talk, my terrible roommates discovering the flow fixation vulner vulnerability and the risks of sharing a cloud domain. Flow fixation vulnerability is a vulnerability I discovered recently in AWS, MWAA, Managed Apache Workflow, uh, Apache Airflow. Uh, this is a one-click vulnerability that allows account takeover on a victim. So enough with the teaser. I am Liv Matan, a senior security researcher at Tenable. I am Microsoft's most valuable researcher. And as you might notice, I hunt the major cloud providers, AWS, Azure, and GCP. So on the on-prem world in bug bounty, when you run JavaScript on a subdomain, this is a vulnerability, right? When you report it in a bug, bu bug bounty, you get XSS, you get paid. This is a valid vulnerability. But in the cloud, this is something different. The concept is observed differently. Because, for example, there are a lot of services that host web services or even other cloud services on the same parent domain. And other customers, different customers, share different subdomains. Let's take it into a more practical scenario. For example, AWS Elastic Beanstalk. And keep in mind, this is just one example of one service, but this concept affects a lot of services in the major cloud providers. So I, as a customer, customer one, for example, will have a domain in customer1.elasticbeanstalk.com. And Elastic Beanstalk, to those of you who are not familiar, is simply a service that allows web hosting. And another customer, for example, customer two, will host a web application on customer2.elasticbeanstalk.com. And uh, a lot of other customers will be also hosting the same, uh, will be hosted on the same uh, shared parent domain, elasticbeanstalk.com. Now, I, as an ordinary user of the Elastic Beanstalk service, can run JavaScript. So now it gets confusing because as you might remember from the previous slide, this scenario is the exact same scenario like in the bug bounty world when you get an XSS on a subdomain of a victim because I run JavaScript on a subdomain of a victim of, for example, customer2.elasticbeanstalk.com. So this is kind of crazy. So I will define some definitions before we get it started so we'll be on the same page. Super cookie is a cookie that you as a user define or in JavaScript code you simply define to a parent domain and this cookie will be tossed, aka cookie tossing, to all of the subdomains of the same parent domain. For example, if I set a cookie to the elasticbeanstock.com parent domain, the cookie will be set to customer one and customer two and so on to all of the customers of the same elasticbeanstock.com in the same browser. As for session fixation, this is a vulnerability or attack technique that allows an attacker to hijack a user session by, by forcing the victim into using the same uh, retrievable session, the same known session. So for example, an attacker will send this link, the following link, the HTTPS uh, www.xyz.com with the session ID of 1234 to the victim. The victim will then visit the link, will log in with his credentials to the xyz.com website, thus verifying this session of the 1234. Then the attacker can simply use this verified session, the redeemed session, in order to hijack the session of the victim. This is uh, a very brief definition of session fixation, but keep in mind in AWS it gets much more interesting. Some of the potential same site risk, aka uh, short parent domain risks that I can note for you. Uh, these are a lot. I'm sure. I'm. I'm, not, I'm sure you're not going to see all of them. I'm not going to dive deep into all of them. But one of them, a very notable one, is cookie tossing attacks. As we said, super cookie that allows CSRF protection bypass and a session fixation abuse. So these are a lot of risks that uh, are caused. Uh, as a result of the concept of the shared parent domain. And this is very, very um, large also in cloud providers, as you saw in the example of Elastic Beanstalk, and will be uh, in a lot of other services. 
some of the past impactful vulnerabilities could also be prevented if a lesser known guardrail was utilized in that time of the vulnerabilities exploitation. Some of them by Gafnit Amiga and, and a guy named Sirius. And those, uh, both, those two vulnerabilities uh, were exploited by cookie tossing. And that technique could be prevented if the cloud providers were simply utilizing a lesser known guardrail named public suffix list. So that guardrail uh, is a list initiated <coughs> by Mozilla. This is a community collaborative list. And this looks exactly as simple as this thing, this simple list uh, that each organization or a domain owner can register his domain to this list that will then be treated by browsers. So browsers see this list, and each site that you see here is a site that is considered to be shared with different customers. Means that subdomains of the same site, aka shared parent domain, will be shared with different customers. Sensitive data is shared. Therefore, the site uh, should be considered as a public suffix. Now, this public suffix list is lesser known, and I will show you exactly why in the following slides. Because in AWS, these are all of the services. Some of them I reported to AWS, and some of them AWS themselves uh, initiated research in order to, uh, to find these services that their domains are not present in the public suffix list. So this is the state of AWS currently as for the public suffix list. And it means that. Uh, now it uh, is all reported and fixed. These are the domains that were, are now inserted into the public suffix list. But it means that these domains were vulnerable to the same site risks I showed you before, uh, before reporting uh, this risk to AWS. As for Azure, these are some of the domains, including popular names like API management, Azure front door, blob storage. These were all not present uh, in the public suffix list. Now they do after the report. And as for Google, I reported, and they simply stated that uh, this issue is not considered that severe for them. So they would skip that. So you can go ahead and uh, search for some nice bounties with same site risks in Google Cloud. So let's get it started. What is exactly Apache Airflow? Apache Airflow simply is an open source system that handles data pipelines and workflows. And in AWS, you have the managed version of Apache Airflow, Amazon managed workflows for Apache Airflow. We did a sample in our company in Tenable, uh, and we saw that 20% of the customer database we have are using the MWAA service, so the vulnerability is rather popular and impactful. So let's dive in into the flow fixation vulnerability. You can see this screen. Uh, when you visit the service, you can see that each service gets attached an Airflow UI. And as you can see, this uh, Airflow UI I just got hosted on the parent domain of Amazon AWS.com. And after all the stuff that I told you, it might tell you that there is going to be something interesting in that case. Because Amazon AWS.com is a shared parent domain with other AWS services. So how does it really work? You log into the Airflow UI, and you, have, uh, you get a cookie session to the Airflow UI. This is exactly how it looks like. You get a cookie session to your own uh, subdomain of the Apache Airflow managed version. And this session cookie is simply a UUID. After that, you're using your AWS STS in order to get, in exchange, a web token that is essentially a JWT that allows you to then redeem it and authenticate to the dashboard, to the MWAA Airflow UI. Then there is a session retrieval. Now keep in mind, you see this request, and this request is unauthenticated. On the left side of the screen, you can see the request and there are no credentials and nothing that authenticates you. So you might say now, OK, so I can retrieve the session of victims, and we have an unauthentication vulnerability, right? Like authentication bypass. But not really, because this session is retrievable, unauthenticated. But this se session, at that point of the authentication flow, is uh, no use. You cannot use it. You cannot log in with it. This is just a session cookie. This step is making the session verified, and now you can use the session. So in that step, the request 
is using a token, the JWT token we just retrieved, and again, the session cookie, and in exchange, you get the session cookie that is now verified, and now you can use it in order to log in to the Airflow UI. But you can see something very, very interesting here, because the session cookie that, that I got as a normal user of the Airflow UI is the exact same session cookie that I just gave to the dashboard. That scenario is kind of interesting, because now, as an attacker, I can retrieve the known session, unauthenticated, and I can try to force victims into redeeming this session. We just saw the authentication flow, and after they redeem the session that we just retrieved, we have a known session ID, and I might be able to hijack the session with session fixation. So this is a scenario, for example, I have the attacker info, the attacker's bucket, and I have the bucket under a shared parent domain, amazonaws.com. This is by default how S3 buckets work in AWS. And on the other end, I have the victim, MWAA, which also hosted on amazonaws.com. We are both on the shared parent domain of amazonaws.com, and I can simply host an index.html file, then lure victims into my S3 bucket and run HTML, JavaScript, with the JavaScript, I can set a cookie to my victim, and I might do some cool stuff here. So this is how it looks like. I set, I set a cookie in the index.html, this is simply JavaScript, and I set the, the cookie that I just retrieved from the victim's MWA panel, uh, and I set the cookie, uh, that this is the UUID cookie that I retrieved, and I set it to the Amazon AWS.com shared parent domain, does, this cookie will be shared into also the Apache Airflow of the victim because we are on the same shared parent domain and this will be in the browser of the victim. But not so fast because this thing has actually failed. Why did it fail? Because the S3 bucket domain was in the public suffix list and still is. So the public suffix list has prevented me from setting the cookie to the shared parent domain from the domain of S3 bucket. <coughs> The next order of business was to use Google dorking in order to find services that are, that are hosted under the same Amazon AWS.com domain and might allow me to set a cookie from that service. So I found AWS API Gateway that at that time wasn't present in the public suffix list and allowed me to set a cookie to the Amazon AWS.com shared parent domain and this is absolutely crazy because I can now lure victims into my gateway so host the ex exploit code there. The exploit code will set the cookie to the victim's MWAA. This cookie is a cookie that I know that is retrievable. This is a known session ID. And with that session ID, I can redirect the victim, force him into logging in into his own dashboard, verify the session that I know, then I can use the session, and voila. This is how it looks like. This is the exploit code. Uh, so we'll get into it. In that case, I simply wait for a GET request, specifically to the path of the POC for AWS, um, and then I send an HTTPS request to the victim's airflow, to the victim dashboard, uh, to the path to retrieve the session ID. This is all unauthenticated, I don't need any credentials, right? Because this session is not yet verified. Then I save this session that I just got in the cookie value parameter. The next step for me was to use this uh, HTML. I set this HTML into my attacker's page, and this HTML includes JavaScript that will set the retrieved cookie, the retrieved session, to my victim. And I set it by setting this uh, session cookie into the domain of the Amazon AWS.com, which is shared, as you saw. Then, after that, my next step is to use document.location in order to redirect the victim into uh, this uh, nice SSL redirect URL that will uh, essentially force the victim into logging in into his own dashboard. After the victim has logged in into his own dashboard, he logged in with the session that I just set to him. Thus, this session is now verified and I can use it in order to take over the victim's dashboard. This is a nice demo I set for you, so let's go over it.
So here, this is the victim visiting the panel. This is what the victim sees, gets redirected and everything. Uh, he doesn't see anything that uh, is kind of suspicious. This is the victim's browser. You can see as the session that it was injected. This is the attacker's view. He, saw just, uh, he just saw the session that was injected. This is the attacker that was uh, that just used the uh, hijacked session. The attacker is now using the hijacked session after the victim uh, has logged in into and verified his own session. And boom, this is the attacker after he logged in into the victim's panel. Thank you. The fix was is that AWS fixed this vulnerability by refreshing the session uh, of the MWAA. So now, after a user is logging in into the MWAA dashboard, aka the Airflow UI, their session is refreshed after login. Some of the takeaways is that shared parent domains are dangerous. This is just one example of such a vulnerability that can be exploited with this in mind, but we saw two vulnerabilities as case studies uh, that were exploited in the past, and the public suffix list is a lesser known guardrail that people are just less aware of, so let's be community focused. Let's uh, elaborate on the public suffix list, let's use it, because this is very powerful. As we saw, it could prevent flow fixation, and it could also prevent these two impactful vulnerabilities we saw um, as case studies. So this is a very, very interesting and important concept we should take and keep in mind. Also, check if the service domain that you are using is present in the public suffix list. And if not, please assume that same site requests are untrustworthy because same site requests are dangerous and can be risky, as you saw in this, pr this presentation. Thank you. Any questions? No questions? Thank you very much.